Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a 2016 South Korean war drama film, Operation Chromite. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins at Tokyo Harbor with General Douglas MacArthur receiving news about an incoming hurricane. A staff informs MacArthur that proceeding with the operation will result in many casualties. He asks if they should proceed. The screen fades to black. We learn that on June 25, 1950, with the Soviet Union, North Korea invades South Korea. Two days after, U.S. President Truman deploys U.S. forces. However, the rest of South Korea north of the Nakdong River falls in a month. To turn the tide, MacArthur orders a covert operation involving eight men, Mission X-Ray. On a train headed for Incheon, Hak Su comments to Nam Chul that too much reading will make him lose touch with reality. Nam Chul argues that it isn't true and that books are how they get their idea on how the world works. Hak Su spoils the ending by telling him that the main character of the story gets shot and while dying, admires the beautiful blue sky. He asks what the point is and Hak Su shares that when you're dying and in pain, would you really be admiring the beautiful sky? A fight ensues and Hak Su stabs Nam Chul while the rest of his men execute the rest of Nam Chul's own team. They arrive in Incheon where Jang Chun welcomes them. Hak Su introduces himself as Nam Chul. He relays that the defense commander's been expecting him and that their convoy's on standby. Guy Jin welcomes Hak Su who's hiding under the guise of Nam Chul. Guy Jin asks how the action in Nakdong River's going to which Hak Su reports that it's a bloodbath. During the meeting, Hak Su asks how they'll defend against the Americans if they attack by sea to which Jang Chun explains the lone narrow channel that they could access into the bay. He also asks about mines which catch the attention of Guy Jin. He confirms that they're set and the waterway is lined with them. Hak Su asks if it's clearly marked on the map and asks for a copy. Guy Jin announces that he'll personally hand it over to the Supreme Commander, not to Hak Su. The team is introduced to Incheon's hospital staff. Guy Jin playfully informs everyone at the table to be wary of Hak Su as he was sent to monitor them. This was met by laughter from everyone. Guy Jin turns his attention to Jay Sun and asks her what she'll do if her uncle was a religious man. She tries to morally reason it out and argue that a religious man can't blindly follow a party's ideology so his religious leaning should be rooted out. Hak Su, on the other hand, declares that it's an individual's choice to which Guy Jin inquires if he believes in God. He backtracks and announces that their party doesn't believe in God but Guy Jin is starting to suspect him. He asks outright for his unit's password. Hak Su replies that he could be shot if said out loud. He writes it down instead. Guy Jin contacts Sun Sil, head secretary of Democratic People's Republic of Korea headquarter, and asks about Nam Chul. She reveals that the man has a scar on the left side of his neck. Hak Su confronts Guy Jin at the gun range about documents submitted to him that have a different number of planted mines. He demands the map to compare the two. Guy Jin tells him that he's too invested in these planted mines. Hak Su reiterates that the reason he's there is to make sure everything is in order and accuses Guy Jin of making a mistake because he can't get a straight answer regarding them. Guy Jin takes offense to this and points his gun at him. He slowly lowers the said gun, stops around Hak Su's collar, and checks for the scar on the left side of his neck. It's there. MacArthur calls for his team to send out false intel regarding landing operations. Staff reports that Hak Su and his team are still unsuccessful in recovering information regarding the mines and need more time. Two separate meetings happen on August 23, 1950. MacArthur conducts a final strategy meeting at the UN Command Headquarter in Tokyo while North Korean officials gather in Pyongyang. MacArthur fights to proceed with Operation Chromite, a force of UN troops and warships that'll attack Incheon. Guy Jin, on the other hand, tries to convince the North Korean officials to defend in Incheon. Hak Su visits the barber that Guy Jin visited earlier. The barber turns out to be from the Korean liaison office Incheon, Suk Jong. He asks him how he can assist Hak Su to which the man requests a way out for him and his team but assures that the map for the mines will be with them. That evening, Hak Su and his team plan to infiltrate the North Korean officials' offices the next day. He instructs Bong Po to track all the guards during their shifts and relief time, Nam to distract the guards, Jo to sneak into Guy Jin's office, Song and Yang to search for more weapons, then Dal Jong to secure their getaway vehicle and ensure their exit route. Hak Su will then keep Guy Jin and Jang Chun occupied, 
While drinking, Jiang Chun informs Gai Jin he needs to head back as he has some reports to finish. Hak Su calls for Jiang Chun's attention and tries to convince him to stay a little longer but the other man refuses and bids them goodbye. Hak Su has no choice but to hope that Zhou finds the charts before Jiang Chun's back in his office. Jiang Chun runs into Nam who's still disciplining the guards in the hallway. Nam greets him and makes sure to speak loud enough for Zhou to hear him. He tails after Jiang Chun trying to engage the man in a conversation to give Zhou enough time to escape. Zhou and Nam hold Jiang Chun at gunpoint as soon as he enters his office. The two forces Jiang Chun to open the safe and Zhou immediately find the map for the mines in Incheon. Jiang Chun tries to escape but Nam shoots him. They get into a gunfight with Jiang Chun and the other North Korean guards. While the two are distracted, Jiang Chun throws a lighter into the safe to burn the content, especially the map. Nam tells Zhou to save the map and jump out the window as he engages the guards into another gunfight. However, Jiang Chun shoots at Zhou as he stands by the window frame, hitting him on the back and killing him. Nam jumps after him and Jiang Chun misses. When he lands next to Zhou's body, he finds the other man dead and the map burned into ashes. Gai Jin receives a call from Jiang Chun who informs him that Hak Su and his entire team are South Korean spies. Gai Jin returns to the table and decides to ask Hak Su about a story that everyone who is in the Soviet faction knows. A man received an order to kill his bourgeois father but couldn't. His friend did it for him which made him go crazy, killing his comrades then defecting to South Korea. He asks him what the man's name was. Hak Su replies with his own name. He calls Hak Su by his real name and asks him why he's there. The two stand and draw their weapon, pointing them at each other. Yang slowly opens the door to the parlor. He and Song start shooting which gives Hak Su enough time to run. Gai Jin using a hostess as a shield kills Yang which angers Song. Hak Su and the others escape. Nam and Dal Zhang arrive in time on their getaway vehicle to save Hak Su and the others. As they're retreating, Song is hit from behind. They try to come back for him but he tells them to run as he faces the enemies and continues shooting them. The rest successfully escapes. As Gai Jin rages on the guards left at the building, his men surrender two brothers who were caught with US made guns. He kills one of them while the other begs for his life and promises to talk. He reveals that the guns were given by a man with really big eyes and a nice watch. Gai Jin realizes it's his barber, Suk Jong, who he had given a Kim Il Sung watch days before. Vandenberg visits MacArthur to inform him that Truman is considering his plan but wants to make sure that the Chinese don't join the fight. He relays that Truman wants them to back down when they reach the line. MacArthur is against Truman's direct order. General Vandenberg asks him directly if he's trying another shot at the presidency. This angers MacArthur and he berates Vandenberg for trying to educate him or analyze his motives. Arriving at the rendezvous point, Jay Sun catches Suk Jong smuggling Hak Su and his team. She tries to protest but Suk Jong silences her and leads the men through a secret room. Jay Sun discloses that Hak Su is a South Korean spy and begs him to listen. They tie her up, Suk Jong tells them to rest and hide until dawn. Before he leaves, Hak Su asks him to get him in touch with KLO which he agrees to. As Suk Jong arrives at his home, he heads for his equipment to relay Hak Su's message not knowing that Gai Jin is already waiting for him in the shadows. The other man lights his cigarette and Suk Jong sees him. He struggles to find his gun but Gai Jin already has it. Gai Jin's men arrive. Back at the abandoned building where Hak Su and the others are hiding, Hak Su explains his communist leaning to Jay Sun before and what happened when he was ordered to kill his own father. Before he can discuss it further, Gai Jin and his men arrive in the abandoned building in search of them. A bloody and beaten Suk Jong is also with them and Gai Jin asks him where Hak Su and his team is. Suk Jong tells him he doesn't know. Gai Jin tells his men to wake up the whole neighborhood as some of them tie Suk Jong against a tree. Jay Sun begs Hak Su to help Suk Jong. Hak Su asks his men to open the pathway to the tunnel and releases Jay Sun. But she gets there too late. Jin Chul, captain of KLO Incheon, arrives with his men through the secret tunnel. He informs Hak Su that the Incheon landing operation will push through in three days. As the map is gone, Hak Su and his team will need to find another way to locate them. 
Hak Su mentions that since Jiang Chun was the one hiding the map, then he's the only one who knows where the mines are. He proposes they kidnap him at the hospital where he's recovering. At the hospital, Gai Jin enters Jiang Chun's room as Jay's son is about to administer anesthesia. He comments that ideology is thicker than blood which reminds her of what Hak Su has told her the night before. Before leaving, she tells Gai Jin to wait for her in Jiang Chun's room as she needs to tell him something. As soon as she gets the gurney out of the room, Hak Su and his team intercept them and wheel Jiang Chun's body away from her. She chases after them. They transfer Jiang Chun's unconscious body to the truck and make their escape with Jay's son. But Gai Jin and his men are just a step behind. Hak Su falls off the truck fighting a North Korean soldier that hitched a ride. He shoots another soldier riding a motorcycle and steals it so he can catch up to the others. The North Koreans are intercepted by a truck carrying logs that has Dal Jong and Dae Su. They're unable to escape as Dal Jong is too injured to run and they get captured. Hak Su and the others reach the rendezvous point with Jin Chul and his men covering fire for them. As MacArthur prepares for Operation Chromite, he asks his staff to send a message to Hak Su and his men. They are expected to light the Palmito Lighthouse on September 15 to guide the fleet to the beach. Dae Su and Dal Jong are publicly executed in the middle of the streets of Incheon. MacArthur and his fleet arrives in Incheon as expected. They immediately bomb and attack the Incheon shores while Hak Su heads for Wolmido Island to make sure that no surprises await there. He runs into Jay Sun who's geared up and she confirms that she joined the cause as a medic and will be accompanying Jin Chul as they storm Palmito Lighthouse. Jin Chul and his group successfully light Palmito Lighthouse and MacArthur confirm that the road to Incheon is open. He directs them to cease their fire and deploy the advance unit at once. Hak Su and his group realize that Gai Jin has ordered more TNTs to be buried on the beach which is enough to wipe out the incoming fleet. The group decides to set them off early. Nam goes off alone while Hak Su prepares to fire the tank on Gai Jin's command center. Gai Jin, on the other hand, is getting ready to bomb the battleship he suspects MacArthur is on. Hak Su misses on his first try but is victorious on his next attempt. Risking his life, Nam sets off the TNTs. Bong Po is hit by shrapnel as he and Hak Su try to escape. Hak Su fires the flare gun that MacArthur and the rest are waiting for. The signal that Operation Chromite can proceed. Gai Jin shoots at Hak Su and kills Bong Po. He confronts him and is about to shoot him when he realizes he's out of bullets. As he tries to reload, Hak Su pulls his own gun out, tells him that they should end it, and kills him. With too many injuries, Hak Su reminisces about his comrades who fell and regrets not bidding his mother goodbye when he saw him earlier. Jay's son finds his body but it's too late. MacArthur finds him as well and sees that he died fighting Gai Jin off. The movie ends with the actual photo of the 15 men who died during Mission X-Ray. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.